already have been to Azerbaijan, correct? Mm -hmm. And you're going to be transported up to beautiful Tbilisi in, for the conference, right? Um, the interesting thing from an American perspective, living here, the culture here is very friendly. Hospitality. It reminds me of places in Vermont, not Los Angeles, to be honest. Um, in terms of almost small town, rural America friendliness. At the same time, there's important cultural differences. For example, one of them was cell phones, where when I first moved here, I would either be in a meeting with a government official or teaching a class at the university, and it's very common for Armenians and Azerbaijanis and Georgians to feel free to answer their cell phone in the middle of a conversation with you. It's pretty sketchy, but it's a cultural division. Now what's important is part of the dot-com effort is, I would see it as an onion. You peel away different layers and you keep peeling away at different layers. In terms of social change, in terms of social media, in terms of cross-cultural communication and awareness, there are, in many ways, um, a lot to be done. We're sitting in a country now of less than 3 million people, which has four borders with different countries. Two of these borders have been closed for years. The Armenian border with Azerbaijan and the Armenian border with Turkey. What this means for a country like Armenia, which is landlocked, which has no ports, no ocean, it's not just preventing lobster dinners here or sailing, but it's also preventing awareness and engagement with the world. So what I wanted to focus on today and to steal the dot-com title is to talk about social media and social change. Uh, but unlike many Americans, especially my age, unlike many Americans my age, I'm going to be brief and not talk for too long. But I just want to go over three specific points. The first is what I would call the mission. The second is the methods. And the third is what I would say is the mandate, or what's needed or necessary. In terms of the mission, it's all about communication, as you all know. Personal communication. It's about communication between peoples, especially in this region, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, but also Armenia and Turkey, for example. It's about communication. Because of years of conflict, closed borders, many of your generation in Armenia don't know their counterparts in Azerbaijan. Many in Azerbaijan have never seen an Armenian, except in a bad movie, maybe. In other words, this isn't ET, but it is a lack of understanding of each other. But what communication leads to is awareness. Awareness of the problem of getting to know each other. And hopefully after awareness, leading to learning about each other. And then the third step is more understanding. Where Armenians and Azerbaijanis, for example, and Georgians can understand each other better. Now, the interesting thing, the only reason I'm wearing a tie, because I usually don't, even when I was in the American government, I didn't like ties. But I just did an interview for Iranian television, which for an American, it's a big deal. For an Armenian, it's not a big deal. But when I was on Iranian TV, the reason they came and interviewed me was because they don't talk to Americans much. They don't talk to Armenian Americans ever. So it made it kind of interesting. But even with Iran and America, it's the same problem, getting to know each other again and moving beyond conflict by using communication. The second thing that's important is what I would call breaking down walls. The walls in this region are not only physical in terms of closed borders where armies are separated on each side, but breaking down walls in terms of not just closed borders, but mental borders. Because in many ways, we need to break down the walls between Armenia-Turkey, Armenia-Azerbaijan, between Azerbaijan-Armenia, 
And in terms of breaking down walls, that also leads to the next step, building bridges. And in fact, your work, your participation, is all about building bridges, not only to each other, but to other people in different countries and societies. Because the interesting thing, despite years of conflict and war in this region, these are all countries, whether they like it or not, that share the same geography. You guys are brother and sister. Armenia and Azerbaijan, whether they like it or not, are also brother and sister. They're neighbors. They were born as countries, as neighbors. In many ways, we don't get to choose who our neighbors are. We don't get to choose who our relatives are either. But what this means is we have to accommodate reality. And hiding behind walls and having no bridges to each other is not a way to live. And in fact, Armenia with its closed borders, without relations with Turkey, without relations with Azerbaijan, this is not normal, in my opinion. Many, some Armenians may disagree, but I don't think it's normal. Now, in addition, if this is the mission, let's look at the method or the tools. The method to accomplish the mission is all about, in this, in this context, is all about tools and technology in leveraging or using social media to break down these walls. And for the Armenian participants, you guys participated in bar camp? Yes. 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 Actually, my wife was one of the organizers and workers at bar camp. And what bar camp was, was almost the woodstock of our generation of technology, where in terms of Facebook, Twitter, in terms of Neil Klasinski, whatever the Russian version is, <laughs> in terms of leveraging technology as a social tool, the other important thing regarding the tools or the uh, method for the mission is all about overcoming the digital divide. The digital divide is something not only affecting Armenians versus Azerbaijans versus Georgians, there's a digital divide in this country where students in Yerevan generally have good internet access or can go to an internet cafe but there's an important digital divide in each of the countries where there is no internet in the villages or the towns. When you talk about fiber optics or cyberspace, most of the villagers and town people don't know what you're talking about. I mean, it's like the Amish. Some of them live without electricity, without good running water. It's almost a century ago. And this way, in Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia, there are at least two different countries in each country. In other words, one Armenia in the capital. Internet, paved roads, running water, but in the villages and towns, a very different Armenia, very backwards. In Azerbaijan, Georgia, the same thing. Um, from an American perspective, maybe parts of LA resemble that, but most American states even the smallest towns and rural areas are wired. And there's no question about a digital divide anymore. The interesting thing too is overcoming the digital divide is also about social networking. In tech terms, social networking is your Facebook friends, your groups on Facebook, etc. for one example. But this is also social networking on a personal real-time, live level. It's interaction, it's communication, but it's networking. Networking in terms of what you learn on your visits to these exotic countries. You bring something back home with you to Sudbury and to Vermont and to Florida. In other words, the experiences here will be rich, will be diverse, hopefully will all be pleasant, but in other words, it's a two-way social networking where you're planting the seeds today for what will grow tomorrow, hopefully. The other important thing about this region and America, now that Obama is president, and yes, I'm a Democrat, maybe it shows, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power in every country, from Venezuela to Iran to America. But what I'm talking about now is 
Obama was elected on a message of change. 